Hi everyone, so this is going to be part two of eVPN series. Uh, if this is the first video you're watching, you probably should go back and watch the first one because uh, we're going to jump straight into the next example. We're going to review really quickly uh, the static VXLAN configuration, but then we're going to look into multicast, uh, you know, look, identify scaling problem and, and see how we can fix it with multicast. And we're going to see a quick example of, uh, of the actual configuration uh, of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we, we kind of jump into it, I do want to paint a quick picture for you. So uh, um, in, in case of uh, EVPN, I want you to kind of see this anytime you're thinking about it. So you, this switch right here, just like in the last video, this is my VLAN, uh, different hosts connect to that VLAN. But then there's this layer three kind of engine, the, the more intelligent engine that connects us to the overlay, that's the interface NVE. Uh, it's capable of doing all these things. And then there is a layer two, logical layer two connection between the, your VLAN and your NVE. And that's your uh, VNI, a VNI ID that, that pairs those two together. And then this this interface NV then connects you to the VXLAN overlay. So I want you to have that picture anytime you're thinking about EVPN. It will help a lot. Um, now let's look at the, the last uh, session's example. So last session's example was a direct connection of two physical switches. We have a peer connectivity between them. We have that peer command, peer IP. Uh, that anytime it receives uh, any traffic via that VNI into this uh, NV virtual interface, it just replicates it statically to that IP address. Uh, and that's it. So um, again, if, if you if you look at that, it's, it's great, it's simple, but it doesn't scale. So what do I mean by that? If we look at the, instead of two separate switches, like we, well, like we saw in the example, if we look at in a traditional implementation, which is your data center implementation, you got your leaf switches, you got your spine switches, or in the case of traditional infrastructure, you got the distribution, the access, uh, it, it doesn't scale. You're going to need a lot more VXLAN pairing. As a matter of fact, I didn't even depict it correctly on here because potentially you would need a full mesh of peers, especially if you have layer three coming directly into your distribution or spine. Uh, it's not just six as you see here. You can potentially need uh, the full mesh, which is your formula n times uh, n minus one divided by two. So in this case, it would be um, it would be 10 connections if you had 10 switches, which is 10 times 9 divided by 2 is 45 connections. So it's, it doesn't scale. Uh, and what's worse, not that it only doesn't scale, anytime you have a separate peer connect connectivity command, when you do send a broadcast frame, for example, you're going to send it uh, each time separately for every peer. So if you if you send in one broadcast frame and you have 10 switches in your network, which means 45 peer statements, you're sending that broadcast frame 45 times out of the same interface. Not something you want to strive for. So how do we fix it? Let's look at it. Uh, this is a physical connectivity now, how you would usually connect your data center. Uh, well, you fix it with uh, multicast. So, uh, and most of you might ask me, wait a second, I'm a data center engineer. I've been doing uh, spanning tree, I've been doing port channels, you know, VPCs, I've been doing v, uh, VLANs. Are you telling me that I have to learn multicast now to run eVPN? My answer to that is you better believe it. <laughs> it's, uh, it, you know, your your traffic will rely, your broadcast and non unicast mul uh, multicast traffic will rely on this multicast underlay to get where it needs to uh, needs to go. So uh, it needs to have a solid multicast uh, underlay. What that means is uh, all the multicast drawbacks, especially the redundancy of multicast, the, the failover times of multicast, you inherit all of that. Uh, and if you don't know multicast, usually if you look at any CVDs or any design guides, uh, and it's mostly true if you run bidirectional PIM uh, with any cast RP, it will be it will be sufficient enough for your for your deployment there, but you do have to understand it if you want to know all the all the ins and outs and and, and pros and cons of which multicast to run for you underlay. So how does it work? Well, it, it works very very simple. Instead of having the peer command, you're actually going to pim join into a group, and then instead of sending broadcast and on unicast multicast traffic to to a specific IP address, you're going to send it to that same group. So that's that's all it is. You're going to rely on multicast to actually replicate it accordingly. So you only send it once wherever the multicast uh, replicator is. We'll, we'll send it accordingly to everybody that joined that group. So in that case, it, it works out a, a lot nicer than than before. 
So let's look at the actual example uh, of how you you know how you configure that. So from our last uh, from from a last example, I had uh, a topology that had static uh, peer commands. So let's review that again. We had that VN segment 10,002, and then we had the peer. In this particular case, I have peer five and six. Uh, and uh, let me go ahead and. Uh, ping from one host to the other to, to make sure the connectivity is in fact working. So, uh, and uh, we see that ping is going through, uh, it's waiting. So it's actually, here's the broadcast, the ARP reply, and our pings are working. Um, so then if we go over here and we'll look at the MAC address table, we're gonna see, okay, we learned the local MAC address on Ethernet 1.1, and then uh, we learned the remote MAC addresses over this NVE peer command, and there, here's our peer 5.5.5.5 and 6.6.6.6.6. So that's our switches. We got switch 4, 5, and 6, and each host connected to them accordingly. So uh, that's, uh, that's, again, that's traditional, uh, uh, traditional peer IP replication command. So uh, now I've actually configured PIM already. Uh, so let's look at the PIM configuration, uh, which is sparse mode everywhere. It's a static RP address, as we can see over here. Um, it joins a group. We can see M route that it sees a star comma G entry for the group that is joined. Um, so uh, again, that's uh, if if you know your multicast, that's uh, that's when you know you configure you have successful configuration of the rendezvous point. Um, then let's go ahead and configure the, instead of the English ingress replication command, we'll go ahead and join into a multicast group. So uh, again, let me go ahead and do it on each one of these three switches. And then I'll do show run, oops, show run to, to let you see what it looks like um, uh, in the end. So instead of having, a, <coughs> excuse me, static replication, it will have uh, um, uh, this multicast group. So again, as we can see here, we, uh, uh, everything looks exactly the same. The only thing that's different is instead of static replication, we have multicast group, we identify the multicast group. Again, in order for this to work, you have to have a working underlying multicast, uh, multicast topology and multicast protocol and everything should be working for multicast in your underlying. So uh, now let's go ahead and uh, look at the MRAU table. So again, that's how you know um, that things are happening in, in multicast. So again, we had their star comma G entry that we had before. Uh, then we have a star comma G entry for the group that we've joined. Uh, so again, that's bi-directional PIM. And then we have S comma G entry for our NVE address itself. Um, so again, it's, it's something that you have to understand. If you want me to do a separate session for multicast, I can go ahead and do that. Just set a command, uh, comment, uh, section, request me to do a series of multicast and I'll go ahead and do that. So let's, uh, let's ping some, some stuff now. 10.10.10.20, server two, pinging is working. Um, uh, let me try the third server, 30, uh, that is working as well. So let me actually clear the Wireshark here and let me delete the ARP entries here so we can validate that is in fact sending broadcast and we can see broadcast coming through here. So the first frame is in fact ARP request, which is a broadcast and we see an ARP reply. So again, the broadcast traffic works, which goes to our multicast group here. And we can see that uh, uh, we, we learned those MAC addresses again uh, accordingly. So as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and clear the MAC address table uh, and then show you the MAC address table. So I have the alias exec commands um, that has a shortcuts. So let me ping again and make sure that it is in fact learning it via multicast. Uh, so here is me pinging 30, which is the third server. And then uh, let me do the command. And as you can see right here, we're in fact learning our MAC address and we learn the server, which is the third server on the, on the, on that last switch there. So, uh, that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's how you would use multicast in the, in the, in the control plane there, uh, for the VX LAN. And then the next series, we're going to look at MPBGP and, and some other possible, um, uh, additions to that. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and until next time.